how big are the differences between the countries in the world today. I'm going to try to show it here on this graph that replaces north and south with health. So we have life expectancy rate on this axis here. And up here you live 80 years, you have 50 years on average, and down here you have only 30 years on average. On the other axis down here, I will replace east and west with income, GDP per capita. So down here you have $500 per capita, and in the other end of the axis you have $50,000 per capita. Big differences in, in both directions. So then we can see 2001, life expectancy in the world, world on average was 67, 68 years of age, and we had a little bit over $7,000 per capita. But this is an average, and we know that there are big differences between rich and poor countries, so we have to split up the world in its region. So we start with that and show the differences between sub-Saharan Africa down there in the graph and the rich OECD countries up here. The rich countries up there are Western Europe, Canada, United States, Japan, and Australia. And uh, here we have sub-Saharan Africa with a life expectancy rate under 50 years of age. We can also see that Latin America up here has passed Eastern Europe who went backward uh, in economy during the 1990s, to the left in the graph. Not so much down, but to the left. And Eastern, Euro Eastern Asia went in the other direction and became richer and went from left to right in the graph. We had South Asia falling a little bit behind, and then we had uh, Sub-Saharan Africa that is painfully clear which region that is falling behind the most, with life expectancy rate, as I was saying, under 60 years of age. But this is also average, right? And uh, we have to split up Africa to see the differences between the countries in Africa, because not all African countries are down here. So I will split up the region to see that Mauritius and Cap Verde up here has very high life expectancy, very much money uh, on average, right? And the ri richest country in the region is uh, South Africa here that has more money than Latin America or Eastern Europe on average, but life expectancy rate is only 50 years. How come? Well, because of two things. The inequality in the country uh, is one reason that although there are rich people, there's also a lot of poor people that don't have access to healthcare and so on. But it's also because, of course, um, because of the HIV AIDS epidemic who pulled down life expectancy rate at least 10, 15 years in a country like uh, South Africa. And although there are big differences within the region, you can also see that most countries in Africa have lower income and lower life expectancy rates than basically all other countries in the world. In this down left corner today is pretty much only sub-Saharan Africa. We split up South Asia uh, and the size is population. So the big uh, bubble here is India. We split up East Asia to see huge differences. We have China in the middle here, but we have for example, Korea, Malaysia, or Singapore, who already gain on the rich OECD's countries. We have huge differences between the Arab states with Yemen, poor Yemen uh, in this end of the axis, and rich, for example, Kuwait on this end. They're just one hour flight from Yemen to Kuwait, but there's this, they cover the whole economic spectrum. Eastern Europe differs in income and splits horizontally. It's not that much difference in health. Um, and how come? How can Tajikistan over here has such high life expectancy, although they have just as little money as Mozambique, but in Tajikistan you live 70 years and Mozambique only 40 years? Well, because life expectancy rate was raised during the Soviet Union era, and uh, you built infrastructure and, and healthcare systems. So although the country moved backwards during the 90s in economy, life expectancy didn't fall that much. It's very rare that countries fall in life expectancy rate. Income, you can go either way when it comes a crisis and so on, but life expectancy, health is pretty stable and you, you normally don't go backwards in health. Some of the countries in Central Asia has fallen a few years, but not globally speaking, uh, not that much. It's, it's very rare. And during the 1980, there were only four countries who moved backwards in, uh, gl in human development. And I will show you very soon how the situation was during the 90s, which was much worse. I will split up Latin America and the Caribbean. And most countries up are in this group here, middle income countries with life expectancy rate over six years. With two exceptions, we have one country here, Cuba, little money, 
poor country, low GDP per capita, but very good health statistics. Um, uh, and uh, we have Haiti down here, which has low life expectancy rate and low GDP per capita. Let me split up uh, the rich countries, and then we have a world map. But instead of north and south, we have health. And instead of east and west, we have income. And this is how the countries uh, position themselves on that map. It's very clear to see that sub-Saharan Africa, again, is falling behind. And the differences between the poorest and the richest countries up here is huge, probably never bigger in history. But it's also interesting to see that most countries are not poor countries in this corner anymore. And most people don't live in that uh, kind of country anymore. Most people live in middle income countries with life expectancy rates over 60, 65 years on average. In this group is where the absolutely the most of the world is. And then we have the richest countries up in that corner. Uh, has it always been like this? No, this poor corner here with only Sub-Saharan Africa today was totally different if we go back 40, 45 years. Let me now go back to the 1960. And again, remember, this corner, only dark blue countries, Africa, uh, south, south of Sahara. But look at 1960. Then we had the rest of the world represented in that corner. We had East Asia. We had South Asia, India, China. We had Arab states. We have Latin America. Then we could actually speak about developing countries or developed countries and developing countries. We made up the... the the words of first world, second world, and third world countries. And back then in 1960, maybe it made sense because then we had a huge difference between the little group here and the big group here. Developed and developing countries. And the world does not look like this anymore. So that's why we can't talk about developing and developed countries anymore because that world does not exist today. But it did exist in 1960. And now you will get 30 years of history from 1960 to 1990 in about six seconds. So keep up. You see that most countries from 1960 to 1990 move in the right direction. They become richer, but they also become healthier. And uh, already here, most countries had a life expectancy rate over 60 years on average. And they also gained in income. Uh, Africa, south of Sahara, moved also in the right direction when it comes to health. And uh, closing up on the 50-year line here, although much slower than the rest of the world. So even during the 70s and 80s, they were falling behind, but not that much as during the 1990s. Um, so they went in the right direction. Only four countries went backwards, as I was saying, in the 1980s. And now look at 1990, how the situation was totally different. And this break in the trend is very dramatic and something I don't think we have seen before. Africa is actually falling down in life expectancy, which I said was very rare. And about 20 countries fell in human development during the 1990s. And worse off is, of course, sub-Saharan Africa because of the HIV AIDS epidemic. South Africa, you saw, fell from here to here. Botswana fell from 65 years on average down to around 35 years on average. It's, that is why the situation looks as it does today with only sub-Saharan Africa in this poor corner. This graph and other presentations can be found at www.gapminder.org. Thank you very much.